internal corrosion in oil and gas pipeline systems a broad perspective part 2 lecture by dr g subramanian chief scientist retired csir central electrochemical research institute internal corrosion control for this the following are unique features controlling product quality composition minimizing stagnant flow liquids removal for natural gas pipelines and inspection monitoring and alarms corrosion protection methods they are cleaning picks and tools inhibitors biocides other chemical additives control moisture and chemical content of the products and pipeline inline inspection tools integrity management hazardous liquid natural gas chemically compatible corrosion control and integrity management internal corrosion control or the important selling features under these headings internal corrosion control in general corrosive gas may not be transported by pipeline unless the corrosive effect of the gas on the pipeline has been investigated and steps have been taken to minimize internal corrosion whenever any pipe is removed from a pipeline for any reason the internal surface must be inspected for evidence of corrosion if the internal corrosion is found the adjacent pipe must be investigated to determine the extent of internal corrosion replacement must be made to the extent required and steps must be taken to minimize the internal corrosion gas containing more than 0.25 grain of hydrogen sulfide per 100 cubic feet that is 5.8 mg per meter cube at standard conditions that is 4 ppm may not be stored in pipe type or bottle type holders corrosion control design and construction of transmission line design and construction each new transmission line and each replacement of line pipe wall fitting or other line component in a transmission line must have features of incorporated into its design and construction to reduce the risk of internal corrosion at a minimum unless it is impracticable or unnecessary to do so each new transmission line or replacement of line pipe wall fitting or other line component in a transmission line must be configured to reduce the risk that liquids will collect in the line have effective liquid removal features whenever the configuration would allow liquids to collect and allow use of devices for monitoring internal corrosion at locations with significant potential for internal corrosion NASA international standard practice for control of internal corrosion in steel pipelines and piping systems the standard presents recommended practices for the control of internal corrosion in steel pipelines and piping systems used to gather transport or distribute crude oil petroleum products or gas the standard serves as a guide for establishing minimum requirements for control of internal corrosion in the following systems crude oil gathering and flow lines crude oil transmission hydrocarbon products gas gathering and flow lines gas transmission gas distribution and storage systems so we have six categories under this broad categories number one is pipeline design number 2 is corrosion detection and measurement number 3 is methods for controlling internal corrosion number 4 evaluating the effectiveness of corrosion control methods 5 operation and maintenance of internal corrosion control systems and at the foremost the last one is corrosion control records so first one is pipeline design under this most pipelines are underground and under sea while some operate above ground 
the amount of each of the components in the gas or liquid stream can significantly affect measurement operation pipeline efficiency and potentially corrosion identification of corrosive gas or liquid in a pipeline is achieved by analysis of operating conditions impurity content monitoring data mitigation schemes and other considerations the quality of the gas or liquid to be transported should be determined examples of impurities from a corrosion standpoint are 1 bacteria 2 carbon dioxide 3 chloride 4 hydrogen sulfide 5 organic acids 6 oxygen 7 solids or precipitates 8 sulfur bearing compounds 9 water the image on the left side of the slide shows you the view of a pig a cleaning pig for 710 millimeter that is 28 inch dia oil pipeline the blue plastic disc seal against the inside of the pipe to propel the device and to remove loose sedimentation or scale buildup the black rectangles at the top the circular disc in the center or magnets to attract and remove any loose metal objects in the pipeline So under this pipeline design, knowledge of impurity content and gas or liquid composition allows predictions of the magnitude of harmful effects that might result from their presence. Principal harmful effects that should be considered are physical deterioration of the pipe as a result of thinning, pitting, hydrogen blistering, hydrogen embrittlement or stress corrosion cracking shortly called SCC. Contamination of gas or liquid by corrosion product. The designer should consider the cost of additional treatment to reduce corrosiveness of the gas or liquid in relation to the cost of other corrosion mitigation methods such as increased repigging, use of corrosion inhibitors, internal coating of the pipeline, or a combination of the, these three methods. Satisfactory performance of the design requires that the specified quality be maintained and that internal corrosion of pipeline is minimal. Design consideration shall be given to control of flow velocity within a range that minimizes corrosion. The lower limit of flow velocity range should be that velocity that will keep impurities suspended in the gas or liquids, thereby minimizing accumulation of corrosive matter within the pipeline. The upper limit of the velocity range shall be such that erosion, corrosion, cavitation or impingement attacks are minimal. Intermittent flow condition should be avoided when possible if operating criteria dictate the need for intermittent flow. Design consideration should be given to obtaining an operating velocity that will pick up and sweep away water or sediment that accumulates in lower places in the line during periods of no flow or low flow. If water, sediment or other corrosive contaminants are expected to accumulate in the pipeline, picks should be used to clean the line. The design should include pick loading and receiving traps. Operating procedures for adequate cleaning shall be developed and implemented. Changes in the size diameter should be designed to provide a smooth hydraulic transition, thereby eliminating pockets of altered flow velocity where corrosive contaminants can collect. Dead ends associated with blind flanges, stubs, laterals or tie ends shall be avoided in design. Dehydration to reduce the dew point is often the only measure needed for corrosion control in gas pipelines. Lines should be monitored using probes or coupons to detect the presence of corrosive attack. If reductions of water content alone will not control the expected corrosion, other mitigation methods such as picking, internal coating and chemical inhibition may be used in conjunction with dehydration to provide adequate corrosion control. When the addition of chemicals such as corrosion inhibitors, oxygen scavengers or biocides are used to mitigate corrosion, 
Design shall include facilities adequate for treatment of the pipeline or facility. When a corrosion problem is anticipated, internal coatings may be considered. Designs may include provisions for monitoring corrosion through the use of inline inspection tools. And the pipeline should be designed to permit free passage of these inline inspection tools. Design features that should be considered include pipeline bends, valves and traps. Inline filters should be installed in front of the pressure control and measurement equipment to protect them from solid particles transported in the gas or liquid. Next category is corrosion detection and measurement. Under this, the foremost one is visual inspection. Evidence of corrosion on internal pipe surf surfaces, the types of damage should be identified. Example, etching, pitting, and elongation of attack. To characterize the type of corrosion, measurement of wall thickness in the most deeply corroded areas if corrosion damage do exist. Circumferential and longitudinal extent of corrosion on the pipe surface or any discernible pattern of attack. Position of attack with respect to horizontal at the corroded section or with respect to elevation of adjacent pipe sections. Existence of deposits and corrosion under the deposits. A sample of the deposits shall be obtained for analysis. The next one is coupons and probes. The use of properly located coupons and probes can be an effective method for determining the existence rate and type of internal corrosion. If corrosive gas is being transported, coupons or other suitable means must be used to determine the effectiveness of the steps taken to minimize internal corrosion. Each coupon or other means of monitoring internal corrosion must be checked two times each calendar year, but with intervals not exceeding seven or half months. seven and half a months. Coupon or probe results may be more difficult to interpret when coupons or probes are installed in systems in which the gas or liquid contains sufficient amounts of paraffin or other insoluble material that may deposit on the coupon. Intrusive coupons or probes would prevent picking of a pipeline segment. Further, sampling and chemical analysis. Samples shall be taken only by experienced personnel or by those who have been instructed in the proper procedures. Clean valves, spy goats, containers and sampling environment are necessary for taking dependable samples. If liquid water is present in the system, analysis may be made for carbon dioxide hydrogen sulfide, bacteria, acids and other corrosive constituents. Analysis of carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide should be made in the gaseous phase. Analysis to determine other undesirable compounds in the gas or liquid such as those that cause scaling and plugging may be made periodically. The frequency and compre comprehensiveness of chemical analysis of any gas or liquid should be determined by the variations and the quantities of the gases or liquids in the pipeline system. ILI tools ILI tools may be employed for detecting corrosion damage. Correlation between corrosion indications on the log and actual distances on the ground is vital to enable exact determination of corrosion sites. Verification is necessary to confirm the accuracy of inspection. Pressure drop measurements. Changes in pressure drop measurements across a given segment of a pipeline can be indications of corrosion or deposit accumulations and shall be investigated. Inline inspection tools. ILI. Safety is our first priority in every phase of construction, operation and maintenance of our assets. Our comprehensive pipeline integrity program includes the use of sophisticated inline inspection tools 
classes the integrity of existing pipelines, clean pipelines of debris, and inspect pipelines before commissioning, performing preventative maintenance through the use of inline inspection tools allows us to detect and resolve any potential anomalies within the pipelines before they become a problem. So this is the view of the peak arrangements used in internal cleaning of the pipeline system. What are in what are inline inspection tools? Inline inspection tools or smart picks or electronic tools that travel through pipelines using magnetic sensors to detect irregularities that may indicate corrosion, gouges, cracks or other defects. Using the smart picks we can identify anomalies and, the, and perform preventative maintenance before an accident occurs, making the tools an invaluable asset to our safety program. This proactive measure greatly reduces the probability of a reactive response. How do these inline inspection tools work? Smart picks are inserted into the pipeline at a valve site or pump station where the flow of product within the pipeline can be used to launch the tool into the main line. We use several types of smart picks as part of our integrity management program. Magnetic flux leakage tools, MFL tools, identify and measure metal loss using magnetic resonance to create a temporary magnetic field and capture data. If no defects are found, an even distribution in the magnetic field will be shown. Anomalies such as metal loss will be revealed by a disruption in the magnetic field. Ultrasonic tools. Compression wave ultrasonic testing tools measure pipe wall thickness and metal loss. Shear wave ultrasonic testing tools detect longitudinal cracks including weakness, weaknesses in a weld or other crack-like defects. Caliper geometry tools use mechanical arms or electromechanical means to measure the internal surface of the pipe. In doing so, it identifies dents, deformations, other ovality changes as well as girth wells and wall thickness and in some cases bends in the pipelines. Electromagnetic acoustic transducer tools EMAT tools are generally used to detect stress corrosion cracking and are commonly used in liquid pipelines. Our integrity engineers determine which assessment tools should be used based on data integration analysis and potential factors associated with the pipeline. How is the data used? Smart pick sensors transmit digital data back to our inline inspection vendors for analysis. Advanced imaging software is used to identify the types of anomalies, if any. This enables us to determine what level of preventative maintenance is required. We can also use this information to plan for future repairs. So the image at the bottom gives you the transmission pipeline inspection, data transmission and data analysis. What are the benefits? Smart picks are one of the most sophisticated and advanced tools we use to inspect the internal and external condition of our pipelines. The primary benefit of using the tools is to prevent potential issues before they happen. Additionally, the tools can clean and inspect the pipeline without having to stop the flow of product. Protecting people and the environment. Early detection helps keep our people and communities safe and significantly reduces the potential for environmental impacts. So 76% has been saved. Since 1999, corrosion caused pipeline Incidents are down 76% across the industry with the use of smart picks. Regulations for pipelines are regulated by the Pipeline Hazardous Materials Safety Administration under Federal Codes and Regulations 49 CFR, CFR 192, 
for natural gas pipelines and section 195.452 for liquid pipelines these requires require us to perform baseline and reassessment testing the frequency of this testing depends on several factors associated with the maximum internal allowable per code we are required to inspect all pipelines at different frequencies but often we assess at earlier intervals and inspect more miles of pipelines than re- required going above and beyond the federal regulations the third important category is methods for controlling internal corrosion in this the more first first and foremost important thing is line cleaning cleaning pigs are used to improve and maintain internal pipe cleanliness by removing contaminants and deposits within the pipe periodic line cleaning with pigs can be used in conjunction with other corrosion mitigation measures such as chemical inhibition or dehydration some corrosive situations that can be remedied at least in part by picking include loose sediment including corrosion products scale sand and dirt that may promote formation of local corrosion cells on the pipe's bottom quadrant corrosion products wax or other solid deposits adhering to pipe wall that can shield actively corroding areas thereby limiting effectiveness of other corrosion mitigation measures such as chemical inhibition a variety of pick designs with the differing degrees of line cleaning capability are available some have spring loaded steel knives wire brushes or abrasive grit surfaces for removal of adhering contaminants others are semi rigid non metallic spears in addition flexible foam picks can traverse line pipe of different sizes and can pass through short radius bends the choice of pick type depends on the following ability of pick to remove contaminants present ability to traverse pipe segment compatibility of materials of construction with gas or liquid feasibility of its use from an operations standpoint possible problems may exist when a pick is run in line that has any quill probe coupon anything that protrudes into the line that could interfere with the pick and presence of corrosion inhibitor films or plastic coatings water associated with the gas can be removed at various locations in the system by water separators refrigeration or dehydrators of various types example glycol or dry desiccant dew point control can be used to prevent the formation of free water in the system deaeration can be used to remove oxygen in the commodity in conjunction with deaeration the entire pipeline system should be searched for points at which air may enter otherwise contact the liquid careful equipment design is important to ensure that air does not enter the system oxygen scavenging chemicals such as alkaline sulfides or vacuum deaeration can be used to lower the oxygen content of the commodity to suitable levels effectiveness of oxygen scavenging chemicals is often limited in the presence of hydrogen sulfide other corrosive constituents such as acid gases hydrogen sulfide carbon dioxide and low molecular weight organic acids example acetic acid and propionic acid can be removed from the gas or liquid by acid gas strippers and scrubbers a corrosion inhibitor package contains one or more inhibitors surfactants and solvents the inhibitor can be classified as anodic cathodic or both inhibitors containing phosphorus example phosphate esters or phosphonates or anionic and used to mitigate corrosiveness of low ppm levels of oxygen cationic inhibitors containing nitrogen and carrying a positive charge example ammon amine containing compounds are used to mitigate hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide corrosion nitrogen containing compounds the long carbon chain example imidazolines can act as 
a cathodic and anodic inhibitor. The inhibitor should be soluble in liquid being transported to ensure that inhibitor can get to the area where it is needed. In predominantly dry gas systems, the inhibitor should be applied as a batch treatment between two peaks. Of foremost importance in choosing a corrosion inhibitor is a firm understanding of the corrosion problem and its cause. The choice further depends on the compatibility with the gas or liquid and other additives, ease of handling and injection, and possible adverse effects on downstream processes. Laboratory tests, field tests, industry experience, and inhibitor manufacturer's recommendations can be useful for screening inhibitors as to their effectiveness, degree of solubility, compatibility, or required injection rates. To increase inhibitor effectiveness, consideration should be given to the use of other corrosion mitigation procedures such as line cleaning or dehydration in conjunction with inhibition program. The next one is internal coatings. Internal coatings should also be considered for selected areas such as in-station manifold piping or small diameter gathering lines where it is not feasible or economical to use other corrosion control measures. The coating should have suitable resistance to attack by the gas or liquid being transported as well as by any contaminants, corrosives or additives contained in it. The quality of the transported gas or liquid should not be compromised. Coatings and linings such as baked phenolic or phenolic epoxy, baked modified polyurethane, fusion bonded epoxy powder, short called FBE, catalytically cured epoxy, phenolic paint, in situ, cement mortar, in situ, catalytically, catalytically cured epoxy, coltar epoxy or epoxy phenolic, Plastics or metallic compounds can be used for selected applications. Internal coating can be accomplished joint by joint at a coating plant or by coating entire line segments in place. Regardless of where coating takes place, coating performance is dependent on suitable pipe cleaning and surface preparation as well as use of proper application procedures. Plant applied internal coatings can be electrically inspected, however, verification of in place coating integrity is not usually feasible. Spot checks by cutting coupons or removing test spools are often used for this purpose. When a holiday free coating cannot be guaranteed or aggressive and aggressive corrosive service is anticipated, additional corrosion mitigation measures such as chemical inhibition may be required. To control internal corrosion adequately. The next category is evaluating the effectiveness of corrosion control methods under this coupons and probes. Coupons and probes can be used to determine the effectiveness of corrosion control methods employed. Coupons and probes should be positioned at points within the system to provide meaningful corrosion related measurements. Coupons and probes that are used should provide representative and reproducible measurements for particular application. The exposure time for coupons and probes is based on the type of gas or liquid, velocity of its flow, and expected corrosion rates. If corrosive gas is being transported, coupons or suitable means must be used to determine the effectiveness of the steps taken to minimize internal corrosion. Each coupon or other means of monitoring internal corrosion must be checked two times each calendar year, but with intervals not exceeding seven and a half months. Sampling and chemical analysis. Gas or liquid sampling can be used to determine a change in the corrosive medium being transported in the pipeline system. Gas or liquid sampling should be performed at regular periods. Visual inspection. Visual inspection of solid contaminants may be used to monitor protective protection effectiveness. Changes in volume or weight of corrosion products removed from filters and traps can indicate variations in corrosion prevention. The next category is operation and maintenance of internal corrosion control systems. Amid the first and foremost is line cleaning. Any pick inserted into a pipeline shall be clean and in good repair. 
Picking frequency should be adequate to remove contaminants before internal pipe damage occurs due to corrosion. Changes in pick type and frequency used shall be made to accomplish desired pipe cleanliness. Seasonal changes may require a change in picking frequency or type of picks used. Lower temperatures during winter months may require removal of water or wax that might result in freezing, plugging or corrosion problems. Inhibitor treatment or injection inhibition can usually be accomplished by batch that is intermittent treatment or continuous injection or a combination of the two methods. Frequency of treatment is governed by the remaining effectiveness of the inhibitor after a specified amount of gas or liquid has been moved through the line. Injection facilities vary in design and operation. In general, the installation includes the following inhibitor storage vessel, injector, device pump or nozzle, measurement device, meter or calibrated sight glass, flow controller that is needle or wall. The control can be built into the injector. Connection to the pipeline, associated piping and electrical control hookups. Injector designs as simple as gravity feed injectors as well as more complex proportioning chemical injection pumps and venturi injectors can be used successfully. Care must be exercised in location of such systems, particularly in distribution piping, so that flow bone mist will not adversely affect the operations of pilot operated regulatory systems. Materials of construction for the equipment should be suitable for continuous service in contact with the inhibitor. When nitrogen based inhibitors, amines, amides and nitrites are handled, copper or copper based alloys shall be avoided because stress corrosion cracking might result. Non-metallic seal or packing materials shall be checked for compatibility with the inhibitor formulation. Points of injection shall be chosen to provide maximum benefit in the pipeline system. Injection on the suction side of the pump takes advantage of pump turbulence to promote mixing of inhibitor with fluid. Injection through a tube into the center of the pipeline also aids mixing. Pre-mixing or dilution of the inhibitor can improve handling and promote more rapid dissolution, especially between immiscible phases. Injection point damage can occur due to low pH of the additive or flashing of solvents leaving a solid deposit. Viscous inhibitors can be diluted with a compatible miscible hydrocarbon carrier to decrease viscosity, making pumping easier and metering more accurate especially at low usage rates. Internal coating. If any internally coated pipeline is opened, the coating shall be inspected. Damaged areas shall be suitably repaired, if at all feasible to maintain overall coating integrity. If coating damage is too widespread or repair is otherwise not feasible, supplemental mitigation measures shall be considered. Next category is corrosion control records. Analysis of gas or liquid including impurity content, physical design consideration including pipe size, wall thickness, grade, flow velocity, line size changes, internal coating and type. Considerations for treatment such as dehydration, deaeration, chemicals, internal coatings and monitoring facilities. Relative to detecting, controlling and evaluating corrosion problems and operations maintenance, the following shall be recorded. Visual inspections by qualified personnel, including a consideration of the elements in paragraph. Whenever a piping system is open, inspection and test of probes and coupons and other monitoring devices such as samples, chemical analysis, bacteria results and internal inspection tool runs. In line inspection and line cleaning pick runs including date, type of pick, amounts of water and solids removed by locations, name and quantity of inhibitor, biocide and other chemicals used, leak and failure records. Appendix A. Typical gas quality certification, non-mandatory. Oxygen. The oxygen content shall not exceed 0.1 volume percentage of the gas. 
and the party shall make reasonable efforts to maintain the gas or liquid free from oxygen hydrogen sulfide the hydrogen sulfide content shall not exceed 5.7 mg per meter cube that is 0.25 grains per 100 feet cube note 1 grain per 100 feet cube is equal to 22.88 mg per meter cube mac captains the gas shall not contain more than 5.7 mg per meter cube that is 0.25 grains per 100 feet cube of gas total sulfur total sulfur content including mercaptans and h2s shall not exceed 46 mg per meter cube that is 2 grains per 100 feet cubed carbon dioxide the carbon dioxide content shall not exceed 2 volume percentage of the gas liquids the gas shall be free of water and other objectionable liquids at the temperature pressure at which the gas is delivered the gas shall not contain any hydrocarbons that might condense to free liquids the pipeline under normal conditions and shall in no event contain water vapor in the excess of 112 kg per million cubed that is 7 pounds per million feet cubed note 1 pound per million feet cubed is equal to 16 kg per million meter cubed dust gums solid matter the gas shall be commercially free of dust gum forming constituents and other solid matter heating value the gas delivered shall contain a daily monthly or yearly average heating content of not less than 36 mj per meter cube otherwise 975 btu per feet cubed and not more than 44 mj per meter cube otherwise 1175 btu per feet cube on a dry basis apatix a typical gas quality specification non mandatory temperature the gas shall not be delivered at a temperature of less than 4.4 degree centigrade otherwise 40 degree fahrenheit and not more than 49 degree centigrade otherwise 120 degree fahrenheit nitrogen the nitrogen content shall not exceed 3 volume percentage of the gas hydrogen the gas shall contain no carbon monoxide halogens or unsaturated hydrocarbon and no more than 400 ppm of hydrogen in the gas isopentane and heavier the gas shall not contain more than 27 liters per 1000 meter cube that is 0.2 gallon per 1000 feet cube of isopentane or heavier hydrocarbons note one gallon per 1000 feet cube is equal to 134 liter per 1000 meter cube condensate quality specification sulfur content less than 0.05 percentage by weight of the condensate asphaltenes trace api gravity minimum 35 degree api 25 bs and w the quantity of basic sediment and water contained in a liquid and other impurities less than 0.5 percentage of the condensate appendix b publications providing information necessary for determining the quantity of impurities non mandatory bacteria nasa standard tm0194 latest version field monitoring of bacterial growth in oil field systems carbon dioxide astm d1945 standard test method for analysis of natural gas by gas chromatography ASTM D513 standard test methods for total and dissolved carbon dioxide in water chloride ASTM D5112 that is ASDM ASTM D5512 standard test methods for chloride ion in water hydrogen sulfide ASTM D4658 standard test method for sulfide ion in water ASTM D4810 standard test method for hydrogen sulfide in natural gas using length of stain detector tubes ASTM D1945 standard test method for analysis of natural gas by gas chromatography organic acids BHS L McB the role of acetate in carbon dioxide corrosion the double whammy corrosion 1999 paper number 21 J. Crowlett, N. Thevenot, and A. Duxtad. Role of free acetic acid on the carbon dioxide corrosion of steels. Corrosion 99, 1999, paper number 
ஆக்சிஜன் ஏஸ்டிஎம் டி ட்ரிபிள் எயிட் ஸ்டாண்டர்ட் டெஸ்ட் மெத்தட்ஸ் ஃபார் டிசால்வ் ஆக்சிஜன் இன் வாட்டர் ஏஸ்டிஎம் டி நைன்டீன் ஃபார்ட்டி ஃபைவ் ஸ்டாண்டர்ட் டெஸ்ட் மெத்தட் ஃபார் அனாலிசிஸ் ஆஃப் நேச்சுரல் கேஸ் பை கேஸ் குரமட்டோகிராஃபி அப்பெண்டிக்ஸ் பி பப்ளிகேஷன்ஸ் ப்ரொவைடிங் இன்ஃபர்மேஷன் நெசசரி ஃபார் டிட்டர்மினிங் த குவான்டிட்டி ஆஃப் இம்பியூரிட்டிஸ் நான் மேண்டேட்டரி சோலைட்ஸ் ஆர் ப்ரிசிபிடேட்ஸ் ஏஸ்டிஎம் டி நைன்டீன் ஸ்டாண்டர்ட் டெஸ்ட் மெத்தட் ஃபார் வாட்டர் அண்ட் செடிமெண்ட்ஸ் இன் ஃபியூவல் ஆயில்ஸ் ஏஸ்டிஎம் டி ஃபிஃப்டி நைன் ஜீரோ செவன் ஃபில்டரபிள் மேட்டர் இன் வாட்டர் சல்ஃபர் பேரிங் காம்பவுண்ட்ஸ் ஏஸ்டிஎம் டி ஃபிஃப்டி ஃபைவ் ஜீரோ ஃபோர் ஸ்டாண்டர்ட் டெஸ்ட் மெத்தட் ஃபார் டிட்டர்மினேஷன் ஆஃப் சல்ஃபர் காம்பவுண்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் நேச்சுரல் கேஸ் and gas fuels fuels by gas chromatography and ASTM D3227 under test methods for thiol mercaptan sulfur in gasoline kerosene aviation turbine distillate fuels potentiometric methods water ASTM D6304 standard test method for determination of water in petroleum products lubricating oils and additives by colometric call fissure titration ASTM D1796 standard test method for water and sediment and fuel oils by centrifuge method laboratory procedure appendix C impacts of common impurities non mandatory bacteria microbes commonly found in oil and gas systems or sulfate reducing bacteria SRB and acid producing bacteria APB some of the bacteria are planktonic free floating in the liquids others are sessile and are attached to the surface in the system samples of the liquids indicate the presence of planktonic bacteria however their presence does not necessarily indicate that microbiologically influenced corrosion mic has or will occur coupons placed in the system must be used for detection of sessile bacteria nasa standard TM0194 for details on monitoring to determine the presence location severity of bacterial contamination and see chemical vendor for biocide recommendation and treatment concentration level carbon dioxide if no liquid water is present carbon dioxide is non corrosive in the presence of liquid water the partial pressure of carbon dioxide mole percentage of carbon dioxide into system pressure in kpa psi is used as a guideline to determine the corrosiveness of carbon dioxide see also corrosion control in petroleum production a partial pressure of carbon dioxide about 207 kpa or 30 psi is usually corrosive in the presence of water a partial pressure of carbon dioxide between 21 kpa otherwise 3 psi and 207 kpa otherwise 3 30 psi may be corrosive in the presence of water a partial pressure of carbon dioxide below 21 kpa otherwise 3 psi is generally considered non corrosive caution should be used with the above guidelines in the presence of low molecular weight organic acids acetic acid propionic acid etc or hydrogen sulfide that will interfere a large number of predictive models have been developed for carbon dioxide corrosion rate of carbon dioxide can be calculated using the dewart et al model the corrosion rate is calculated using the partial pressure of carbon dioxide temperature pressure of the system corrosion models by a anderco et al and s nezik et al take organic acids into account appendix c impacts of common impurities non mandatory chloride steel must have a conductive solution on its surface to form a cell for corrosive attack to occur the addition of salts containing chloride commonly found in gas or oil production increases the conductivity and corrosiveness of water resulting in pitting or general corrosion chloride stress corrosion cracking results from the interaction of chloride and mechanical tensile stresses uns s30400 cracks in the presence of parts per million ppm chloride pages 21 22 of corrosion control in petroleum production include a table listing the susceptibility of metal to scc hydrogen sulfide is a very soluble in water it is 200 times more soluble than oxygen and 3 times more soluble than carbon dioxide in water at atmospheric pressure and temperature it corrodes steel forming various forms of iron sulfide which result in pitting corrosion hydrogen sulfide blistering may occur in some steels in presence of h2s hydrogen atoms are sufficiently small to allow entry into and migration within the steel structure structural lattice 
some of the hydrogen atoms enter structural defects within the steel such as voids where they quickly react with other hydrogen atoms to form molecular hydrogen this molecular hydrogen occupies a greater space and can no longer migrate through steel trapped hydrogen gas exerts pressure and can cause blister formation within the steel if the blisters are sufficiently large they can detect they can be detected by external deformation of steel surface hydrogen gas trapped within higher strength steels can lead to stepwise cracking also called hydrogen induced cracking hic within the steel the hydrogen atoms in the metal migrate to a void and form hydrogen gas eventually developing a blister on the surface of the steel see pages uh, 17 and 18 of corrosion control in petroleum production sulfide stress cracking yes yes see occurs in the high strength steel exposed to moist hydrogen sulfide conditions four conditions are required for sulfide stress cracking to occur one is presence of hydrogen sulfide other is presence of water trace amount is sufficient and third is high strength materials and and the fourth factor is steel must be under tensile strengths or loading stress may be residual or applied plain carbon steels with the strength below 620 megapascals otherwise 90000 psi and rockwell hardness below 73 hr 15 or 22 hrc are not affected see nasa mr0175 otherwise iso 15156 for detailed hardness requirements steels with yield strengths above this level are susceptible to cracking the time to failure increases as the hydrogen sulfide concentration decreases cracking can occur at 0.1 ppm levels of h2s in water with a very long time to failure next one is organic acids low molecular weight organic acids acetic acid propionic acid etc can cause severe corrosion when present in gas phase at ppm level presence of low molecular weight organic acids which will partition into water are often not detected in the water analysis due to the interference of bicarbonate presence in the water the next one is oxygen if water saturated with air containing 7 to 8 ppm oxygen is used to hydro test a pipeline the little corrosion of the pipeline results oxygen immediately interacts with steel and is removed from solution resulting in very little corrosion loss however if a constant supply of water containing oxygen flows through the line severe pitting of the pipeline results with the large quantities of water flow through the steel pipelines the oxygen content should be less than 1 ppm an equation to estimate the corrosion due to oxygen relates the corrosion rate to total dissolved oxygen concentration mineral saturation index and exposure time and the final one is water if liquid water is not present in a steel pipeline corrosion does not occur the presence of oxygen carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide in steel pipeline in the absence of liquid water does not cause corrosion at temperature below 200 degrees centigrade otherwise 390 degree fahrenheit hygroscopic salt deposit on the steel surface can cause the formation of invisible water flame on the surface below dew point conditions can cause corrosive attack Thank you very much for watching this video and thanks for your patience.